Hey everyone, welcome back to this episode of Card Crazy. We're going to dig a little bit further into our Navitas build on our 2005 EasyGo TXT. Come along for the ride, let's get started. All right, pretty much untouched from the last time you saw it. I'm um, just going to dig back into it a little bit here. Got a lot of things I'd like to accomplish uh, wiring-wise, um, and I'll, and I'll kind of go through that. Trying to determine, I've got the cup holder out of here right now, but you can kind of see, trying to determine where to put the on-the-fly and the forward and reverse. And I also have somewhere, I think, um, a, a, what do you call it, uh, bear with me. USB port, there we go, and uh, I'm thinking, being that the key switch is going to be here, I'm thinking I would I would notch out for the forward and reverse there. I was thinking about coming down here, but I think rather than have that big kind of a void there, I think I'll put that there. I was also thinking about putting the USB port there, but I think it makes more sense for the forward and reverse. Um, trying to determine where to put the on the fly, and I've got to be a little bit careful um, because of where that wire comes out um, down here, I've got uh, to not get in the way of this because I have to notch, actually I have to notch the cup holder for the wire to go through. And then I've got my battery gauge, um, which I'm going to use a hole saw and punch that through. I'm hoping, yep, there's enough, just enough clearance where that'll fit in there. So I'm thinking probably over on this side for the battery gauge on the fly controller and then maybe our USB port uh, in the middle. So those are a couple things I want to kind of tackle. I'm also digging into this battery charger and it comes with um, about five or six feet of wire and I'm really contemplating just shortening that up. I really only need about two feet at the most on it or I can just come up here and I can eliminate having to have that all looped in there. Also, um, these support bars that come with this kit for the battery to sit on, I'm going to space those out just a little bit different, and then I'm going to come through probably with some self-tappers, and I'll be able to um, actually mount the charger right to those cross beams. So I think that's going to work out good. And then I'm also contemplating on the other side doing something similar with this. So this actually, let me unplug this and I'll show you. So this actually goes through uh, the existing um, slot that they have in the body and then to charge you just plug an extension cord in. Um, but here again too we've got just miles of cable in here that we don't need so I'm really seriously thinking about just shortening that up, eliminating the quick connector possibly leaving the quick connector in. I don't see a really a need to have it in there. Not like I plan on taking this back apart, although that would be handy and it is a really nice connector, so I don't know. And there again too, could just coil this down in here and zip tie it in nice and not worry about it, but I'm pretty fussy, so we'll see what I come up with there. I may have said this in the last video, but I'm seriously thinking about just leaving the tow run switch there and making a label um, for the, the tow side so you know when you're in tow. And just a little bit of running around the neighborhood, I see this is full of rocks, so I've got to get those inner liners in here. They're laying around here somewhere. I've got to get those painted and put back in. So, lots to do, and um, just trying to figure out what I want to tackle first. All right, I think I've come up with a plan. I was going to put the forward and reverse switch in here, and believe it or not, they actually do make plates um, with these squares already cut out. Problem is, I could only find one going this way and not this way, which is the way we need it, obviously. I did find one, but it was like $45 or something stupid, and I thought, well, then that's not going to happen. So really thought I was going to put that forward and reverse switch in there. And then the more I think about it, that's going to be really hard to cut through and fabricate and do all that. Maybe not as hard as I think, but 
Um, I think I'm going to put it right here, and you can kind of see the outline. I used um, a real scientific method to get this in, and that was the gasket uh, that was on there, which moves all over the place and doesn't give you a real straight line. So then I just kind of took my level eye, got in there, and I think it's pretty close, and uh, it'll probably be crooked and annoy the living daylights out of me, but, you know, at least we tried. So... I think that's the plan. That's I'm still sitting here contemplating that. I was worried about maybe putting drinks and stuff in and out of the cup holder while you're going down the road and then accidentally hitting that, but I think it's going to only stick out a little tiny bit, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. But if we did that, and then we put our gauge over on this side, maybe put our USB plug in right here, and then we would put the uh, on-the-fly controller something like there. So you're basically taking up that whole space right there with something and I think that'll fill that in nice. I think. I'm still debating. Do I put it up here? I mean I could definitely get through that metal but am I gonna butcher that up to where it looks awful? And I'm not real impressed with this. I don't know if you can see those imperfections on there. I actually might sand this down and repaint it. Um, and this needs some help too because these aren't quite right. But we'll get there is what I'm saying. Okay, I'll keep thinking and I'll come up with an answer for you here soon. The other problem I'm running into um, with the on the fly is it doesn't quite sit. Either got to be down like that or up like that. It doesn't really... It's kind of like just big enough where you got to go one way or the other. You can't really straddle it. I mean, there's bolts we can put in the back here, and we probably could, if we were really good and got the holes just right, we could probably straddle it and tighten it up like that. Um, but I think it's going to end up being probably like that, where it's out on the top and in on the bottom, which is fine, I guess. Uh, there is 3M tape on the back, but I, mean, I think I'm going to try to use those holes in there. All right, I've made the decision. I'm going to go uh, buy the key switch with it. If I mess something up, I can always reorder one of those plates for like nine bucks. Um, I did want something to fill next to that key switch, and then I think that'll look better um, up there anyway. That, that's my final answer, so here we go. See how close we are with the first try. Oh, we got a long ways to go and a short time to get there. All right, there we go. Wasn't as bad as I thought, I guess. Um, probably actually goes this way, so I'll have to flip it around. But and uh, looks like the old level eye was pretty good. It's not too bad. It'll work for me. I think it's ready for paint. Hit it with the sander a little bit. Don't worry about those scratches in there. This MRO will cover all that up. So we'll take it outside in the spray booth. Spray booth. And uh, get that looking nice. And then we can start working on uh, maybe that battery gauge. All right. Ready to take our hole saw, wherever that is, down here. And uh, I think we're just going to go for it right there somewhere. Eyeball it and hope for the best. How's that look? Pretty good? Alright. Maybe a 
Boy, if that ring was any bigger, it would not work in that space, but it's gonna work. I don't know if it's perfectly level, but I can do that when I uh, put the bracket on from the back side. All right, y'all see where I'm going with this now? <clears throat> um, I've got this notched for this cable to go through. Obviously, I've got to pull it out from up here, and then that cable will run underneath. This will sit in here. That'll be notched for that little chunk of the cable to go through. And I remembered what else I wanted to put up here, uh, and that's my um, door remote. So I'll take the bracket off of that and probably two side tape or velcro or something and put that in so now i probably didn't give myself enough room but boom boom and then we still got a little bit of room for the uh usb port so uh this probably could have gone over that way a little bit but otherwise i might put the door remote up here too who knows we'll figure it out it's not rocket science all right got a few things done off camera uh decided to pull the cowl off and it's basically necessary uh for everything that i have to get done back here especially putting this bracket in um which is holding our uh, battery gauge uh did fire everything up here just to make sure everything's still good and it is um got my uh ford reverse switch mounted in i still have to put the two rivets in here key switches mounted in I um, notched this out. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. I'm trying to get it to pick up uh, where that cord runs down through. I temporarily, permanently put the cup holder back in. I've got to run and get another hole saw. I need an inch and an eighth. Uh, I have an inch and an inch and a quarter. And uh, I need an inch and an eighth for our uh, USB port, which is probably going to go somewhere in there. And then I'm glad I left room because... I also have to put the uh, hazard switch in, which I forgot about. Uh, so we'll mount that in, in the dash here as well. Reran all the wires for, um, of course, the battery gauge and um, the on the fly controller. And there's just a ton of wire. I suppose if you had a, a limo cart or were you know, running it differently, you need more wire. They give you plenty, that's for sure. So this will all get zip tied and tucked in here behind the dash just about getting ready to put um, our turn signal switch in so we can plug all of this mess together and I'll go through that a little bit more in detail when it gets to that point um, my reverse buzzer and I think I mentioned this before they're super annoying but you have to have that if you're going to use the Navitas app to get it programmed so we have to put that in the horn I might have just said that but that's got to get mounted uh, back here, um, this of course is our battery gauge wire, and then they have these diagnostic ports. So I'll probably tape those up, zip tie everything over here. I'm still undecided if I'm going to shorten that um, battery charger cord or just get it a little nicer in here. Uh, let's go over to the other side. So I don't have the um, plug in. Uh, riveted in yet, but that won't be a big deal. Just a couple of holes there. Um, I was just playing around with the inverter, figuring out um, some of the wiring on that. Of course, positive and negative goes over to the battery. And then there's a relay in here, I'm assuming, so your battery doesn't drain um, when you're not using the cart, which is a common problem with the uh, voltage reducers. I keep saying inverter probably, but voltage reducer. Um, I'm assuming that's what that relay is for, so when your key is off, then you're not draining your battery. 
Uh, da, 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 da. A lot going on. So, what should we work on next? Probably need to run to town and get that hole saw would be one thing. I know we got some other errands to run, so I might do that next. Um, I could go ahead and put the turn signal switch in and get the wires run for that. That's super easy, so maybe we'll do that quick. Okay, so I've got the harness uh, ran down, obviously got the turn signal mounted, um, goes into this junction block right here, your harness from uh, your, you know, going back to the uh, power uh, voltage reducer, there we go, Whew. and I uh, got that plugged in, um, there's a couple here, they give you some extra, you'll see on their fog, negative, uh, first position fog, second position fog, um, and then these three are going to be for our hazards, which we'll hook up uh, after we get our hole drilled for that. So those extras, if you want to, you can actually put additional um, lights on here. And um, you've got options, like this is your main, whoops, I guess i got to show you. This is your main headlight switch. Come on, camera. There we go. And um, then you've got a secondary switch over here, which runs... Uh, first position fog, second position fog, and then you've got your high and low beam just like a car. So this cover um, goes over uh, the wiring harness. Not super happy about that. It looks like they cut that off with a dull butter knife or something, but it'll be all right, I guess. We'll cover, cover our wire harness up with that after we throw it on the ground. And then this cover um, goes on this side over here. Uh, I'm not going to put that on just yet, but you get the idea. And then, what have we got left? So, first and second position fog we're not using. Um, we do have our uh, positive and negative for the uh, USB port. They give you an extra one. Uh, power and ground if you wanted to power maybe two of them. I guess I'm not sure uh, what the second one would be for. And then we've got our two wires for our reverse buzzer and that is all we've got left so oh and our horn which is our purple and black down here and then of course these two go to our right and left headlights that's pretty much it so it seems pretty complicated at first but it's not um we'll run back over here uh, this guy plugs into the voltage reducer um, power negative obviously right to the battery for that uh, this is where you might get a little confused, and I've got to go grab that relay, but um, just follow the directions and plug them in accordingly, and we'll bolt our relay in there. And I, Like I said, I believe that's for um, shutting off the voltage reducer so your battery doesn't go dead. I think I said that already. Okay, enough talk. Let's get some more work done. All right, just got back from the uh, big orange hardware store and uh, needed an inch and an eighth and uh, grab one of those and if you're ever worried about uh, do I have the right size hole saw here's a little something you can do uh, use a piece of cardboard first uh, I had an inch and a quarter which was too big I had an inch which was too small I knew I needed an inch and an eighth I just test fitted it and it's perfect so that problem is solved now we're on to the next problem um, cannot find the hardware uh, this is some fine thread Chinese something or another back here. I've got a whole box full of hardware. Of course, one's too big, one's too small. Um, looked all over in my organized mess here and thought for sure I had them. I, oh, here's a bag of hardware I forgot about. Nope, not even close. So, uh, not running back to town. I may either um, just use the... Uh, you know, the supplied, uh, what am I trying to say here? You know, they got this 3M tape on the back, but I just, because of our angle, it's not going to fit in there real good. I, I really wanted to get some screws in the back side, so I may look a little harder for those. Uh, and get that in. We'll punch our inch and an eighth hole in here. And we can start buttoning some of this other stuff up and maybe even go for a little fun ride yet this afternoon. So that's what I'm on to now is hunting the screws for that guy.
Okay, status update for you. Finally found after searching and searching through all my junk boxes, uh, the right size bolts. Believe it or not, I think these are left over from a steering wheel install. I think it's a weird like 7 by 1.0 or something crazy. But anyway, I found two of them uh, and that's going to work. I got my first hole drilled, kind of did a little test fit for that. Did some measuring and eyeballing and I think I'm pretty close to get the second one in and uh, we'll get that buttoned in, get the cup holder back in there. Did lots of zip tying and organizing back here. Still got to drill a hole for the uh, hazard switch. But everything else I'm pretty happy with. Um, I got to tighten up these clamps a little. They're a little loose on that uh, on off switch. But we'll play around a little bit with these uh, these screw holes. Hopefully I'll get it right on the first try. And then, um, yeah, we should be able to put this cowl back on here pretty soon. So here we go. Through the magic of editing, I think we've got everything uh, buttoned up here. Boy, that was a process. I won't uh, bore you with all the details, but just a lot of zip ties and unplugging and plugging. Some of the headlights and stuff weren't working, and um, be real careful on your hazard switch. I had two wires switched around there, which caused the headlights not to work, which caused the USB port not to work. It basically shut off the whole front end, the horn, everything. So just swapping those two around, um, just took me a few minutes to figure that out, but then I was kind of layering everything in here the way I wanted it and zip tying everything in, and I think we're ready to put the cowl back on. I've got this bolted in, the on the fly. We've got our USB port in there, our hazard switch. Oh, oh yeah, and the uh, reverse buzzer. That was throwing me for a little bit of a loop because the first buzzer that I put in there didn't work, so I had to get another one out of another cart. One thing I forgot when I went to the hardware store was some, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, something to hold this, Velcro, there we go, and uh, so I didn't get that done. But anyway, long story short, I think I'm ready to throw the cowl back on here and uh, put the rivets in for the final time, and... That's probably going to be about it for this episode. We do have to button up a few things yet, like I talked about earlier with our charger and some of that stuff, but we'll probably get to that next time. Somewhat buttoned up for today and uh, super happy with the results. Um, I'll show you these turn signals. Um, kind of blink. A lot like a car, obviously. And then the back has sequential, if you've never seen these before. Um, that kind of lights up and get out of the glare of the light there. There we go. So, gonna clean up some tools, throw the seat on, and Go for a little victory lap here around the neighborhood. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Uh, make sure you head on over to Cart Crazy on Facebook. You can always message me there if you have questions. Also, I see a lot of you have been jumping over to BigBattery.com and uh, picking up lithium setups for your cart, so I really appreciate that. Things like that help the channel grow. Uh, also, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a very long time, and that's going to ask you to uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Uh, I would appreciate that. That helps me out a lot. And like and share with your friends. And uh, what's up next? I guess we're going to find out. we got to order parts. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas for this guy. It is going to be my personal cart, hopefully. Uh, and uh, i got a lot of things in mind, some different things I'm going to do. So stick around. We'll check that out next time on Cart Crazy.